Hey guys, like every week, there's been a ton of new information and details around Borderlands 3, so we are going to break it all down and get everyone caught up before E3. Before I get into that, make sure to follow me on Twitter and let's get right into it. The first thing we have to talk about is Gearbox updating fans on the early adopter pack. If you pre-ordered Borderlands 3, you can take the survey through their website, which will give you some additional exclusive gear and loot when Borderlands 3 launches. They sent out an email with some more details, saying that players will only have 14 days to redeem the early adopter pack when the game launches, which gives players an Echo Device skin, a Children of the Vault weapon, and 5 Golden Keys. They only have a placeholder image for the Children of the Vault weapon, so we haven't seen it yet, but the description says, quote, give baddies a taste of their own medicine with this cult favorite. They give an image of the Echo Device skin, which has a gold design, and you can see the VIP on the strap, and five golden keys is pretty self-explanatory. Along with that, they gave an email code which says Joy Puke and can be redeemed for 250 points. That's one other thing I'll quickly mention is they reworked how codes work on their website. So as always, there are always shift codes, which is what you use to redeem golden keys. They're longer codes and nothing new. But now there's also vault codes, diamond codes, email codes, and creator codes. The creator codes are usually used for their bigger events where creators are involved. So within 48 hours of the gameplay reveal, you could have typed in creator codes and gotten a few points, but as I said, they expired after 48 hours. Email codes are also self-explanatory. They are the ones sent out from emails. And vault codes are the ones given from Gearbox. But I'm not 100% sure, and I don't think we've been given any diamond codes yet. Over on Reddit, one of the moderators, Holy Jumper, put together a list of all the codes that are active and what category they go under. So I'll link that down below if you guys are interested and want to get some more points. Staying on the topic of the VIP or Vault Insider program, the first season officially launched. So for everyone that signed up already for their VIP program, you get a shield mod, a grenade mod, and a VIP trinket once the game launches. They also launched two skins and two heads. There is a head for Amara called Brick Top Head with her new skin, Conventional Reppin. While Moe's also got a new head called Mio's, and her skin is called the Conventional Reppin as well. The skins cost 3,000 points and the heads are 4,000, which is a little expensive in my opinion for most players. But just keep checking the website and I'll try to mention when new codes become available. On top of that, they are offering a legendary weapon for Borderlands 3 if 8 VIP reward weapons are claimed, which gives a legendary Malawan gun. That is also a lot of points to get. Getting 8 VIP weapons, you get 1 if you had the early adopter pack, and then you also get a free spin at their weapon wheel, but you'll still have to get 6 more weapons if you want to get this legendary for Borderlands 3. So I actually did some digging and I found on their website they did give a response as to why weapons are so expensive saying quote In game the weapons being offered here are fan favorites that are typically not easy to get your hands on. As such they command a premium price tag when you choose to add them to your arsenal as VIP rewards. And the last thing I'll mention is if you signed up for the VIP program you get a free spin at any weapon they're offering for Borderlands 2 and the pre-sequel. They also said that you do have an equal chance to get each weapon, so a Norfleet isn't less common than a Hellfire. One last thing, finally, is if you don't have enough points to get the heads or skin you want, it is confirmed that all Season 1 rewards will still be available after Season 1 has ended, so into Season 2, which starts in July. So don't be freaked out if you can't get enough points, just keep saving, get what you want, and then just keep saving moving forward. You will be able to get everything you want, hopefully. Let's stop talking about the VIP rewards and move on to weapons. The Borderlands Twitter showed off another new weapon called the Destructo Spinner made by Malawan, which launches fire and cryo orbs. It looks amazing and fires almost like the Chroma in Borderlands 2 Reborn. Fire and cryo seem like a very strong combination and I appreciate them keeping up with this series on Twitter. Staying on the topic of weapons, we have to talk about Trevor Eastman. If you don't know who he is, he's a big fan of the Borderlands series and was diagnosed with stage 4 cancer. He was given a year to live and took to Reddit and asked if it would be possible for him to play Borderlands 3 early. Obviously, thanks to the community and everyone being really helpful and amazing, this blew up and the community came together to make this happen. 
This was though months ago and the story went quiet for a while, but Trevor actually came back to Reddit and Twitter and gave an update a few days ago on Reddit saying, quote, Hey everybody, so I know a lot of you have followed me and my story with my cancer and how Gearbox actually made my dream come true of being able to play some of the game early. But recently, an amazing person from Gearbox actually allowed me to name a gun and the red text under it. I'm seriously so happy and astonished how kind they have been to me and it really means the world to me that they did this for me. I wish I could pay them back for everything they've done and all of you as well for making this dream come true. Thank you again and let me present you a special gun that is going to be in Borderlands 3. So the gun he named is called the Trevenator. The red text says, quote, Trev is gonna get you. And it's a Malawan gun that can switch between fire and cryo. And say what you will about Gearbox, you can't deny their love for the community and they do listen to what everyone says. They are people too, and they made this happen to Trevor without publicly announcing any of it. If Trevor wouldn't have told people that he went to Gearbox and let this happen, it would have never come out. So it really hurts to see when Gearbox just lets the fans and media rub their name through the dirt for every small mistake while never covering the great things they do like this. But huge shout out to Trevor and whoever at Gearbox made this happen and the community for supporting this and making Gearbox take notice. Moving on, last week we mentioned the burger gun Gearbox posted on their Twitter series as well. We actually got an update. Twitch made a compilation showing off Baru using the gun on his stream, which I did mention before, and all the other streamers and the cool guns they found. That's some pretty good marketing if I've ever seen it, and we can play that clip. So with that out of the way, let's talk about E3. The Borderlands Twitter confirmed that the gameplay we will be seeing, or if you are lucky enough playing at E3, will be the character Moe's. They are at booth 1001 in South Hall if you are attending. They also posted that they will be taking questions from the Borderlands Discord to ask the devs during E3. So if you have any burning questions you want to ask, now is the time. Or if you are looking for another Borderlands community to join, the Discord could be that for you. So I'll both those links down below. Another piece of E3 information worth mentioning has to do with Xbox. I feel like a broken record with what's happening with Xbox and Borderlands because I've repeated it so many times. But the Xbox event for E3 is on June 9th. And that's the leaked release date for the new Borderlands DLC. So people obviously saw a connection. It got even deeper when Xbox posted the Twitter to promote their panel and the gameplay used was Borderlands 3. So who knows what it could mean. It could be the marketing rights we've covered since last year, or it could just be Gearbox marketing their event. But if you are interested in that, the event, as I said, is on June 9 at 1 p.m. PDT. And while I was editing this video, Gearbox actually came out and released the full Borderlands 3 schedule for E3. So all these times I'm going to mention are PDT, but on Sunday they will be at the Xbox E3 2019 briefing. Then at 3.20, they'll be at the IGN Live E3 2019 where they say they will show new gameplay. Then at 4.30, on, still on Sunday, Gearbox is going to be interviewed on their own Borderlands Twitch channel. On 6.55, they will be at the YouTube Live at E3 for a live interview and gameplay. Then on Monday, June 10, at 10 a.m., they'll be on the PC Gaming Show. At 3 p.m., they'll be on the AMD Next Horizon Gaming presentation. And at 5.15, they'll be on Twitch at E3 for a live dev interview. Then a day after that, on Tuesday, June 11, at 11 a.m., they'll be at the E3 Coliseum. And this is their Making the Mayhem panel. Then on 2.20, they'll be at GameSpot at E3 for another live dev interview and gameplay. A day after that, on June 12, at 2 p.m., they'll be at the Facebook Gaming Panel at E3 for another live developer interview. And finally, on Thursday, June 13, at 1 p.m., they'll do a Shack News at E3, another live developer interview. As I said, all these are PDT, and these could be subject to change just because they are all live and things do happen at these events. But I'll link that down below if you guys just want to see exactly what's happening and where it's all happening, but definitely tune in because I'll be watching as well. 
Then we got some voice actor news. Last week, we mentioned that Chris Hardwick, who was the voice of Vaughn in Tales from the Borderlands, would be returning according to his ex-girlfriend, Chloe Dykstra. The Verge actually then reached out to Gearbox Software for a statement, and they did confirm that Chris Hardwick is returning and said, quote, We don't have any comments at this time on the process of bringing him on board. So there's been a ton of articles and social media outrage around this, and we'll just have to see if Gearbox actually acts or if they're fine with keeping him on board. I bet they won't change it, but who knows. One other piece of voice acting news that I never covered is that it was actually announced that Chris Rager, he would be returning to voice Mr. Torg in Borderlands 3. He actually did this back in May, but it's exciting because we haven't seen anything about Torg yet. And I really can't wait to see how the seven years and the new engine redesign has changed his character and what he looks like. So we know he's in game. He's coming back. Keep your eyes out for that. We'll keep moving forward and cover these last few stories. In an interview with a French publication, they interviewed the co-heads of Gearbox Quebec and we got some information about the way the game was made. And they said the game was being made without using crunch. Crunch, if you don't know, is basically when a game is failing to meet development milestones, so extra demands are placed on the developers of the game, which can cause them to work longer hours, and this can go on for days, weeks, or months at a time which strains the workers, who are usually salary and not hourly, so all this extra time doesn't equate to any extra money, which kind of strains the workers and can rush out or lead to poor work quality and has been a big concern in the gaming industry as of late. But the co-heads of Gearbox Quebec came out and said, quote, We wanted to develop an organization that operates differently. We wanted to give a lot of creative freedom to people and give them a lot of quality of life. We have a corporate culture that is resoutly against overtime and that we are surrounded by project managers who agree with this direction. You are dealing with very passionate people, so it's easy for managers who do not care about their team to abuse this passion. There is no scientific proof that associates overtime with the quality of a video game. It'd be very difficult to demonstrate. Personally, if I work 60, 70, 80 hours, I will not do my best job. After, why do organizations stubbornly put hundreds of people in overtime for months to finish productions? It's hard to understand. And they close saying that it's the passion and not the obligation to produce that will help make Borderlands 3. Which is great to hear. So many developers have been taking advantage of their employees, so it's nice when a company's culture is against this and they aren't forcing these people to work more time just because they're fans of the series. And closing out, we got the news of Gearbox and 2K's deal for consumer products leading into Borderlands 3. Retail Monster is the agent bringing the retail products for this game. So there will be toys, collectibles, apparel, accessories, home goods, video game accessories, publishing, costumes, and cosplay. The quote they released said, This is the largest roster of licensed products for a brand in both Gearbox's and 2K's history. We are always looking to continue to build upon the Borderlands franchise. This list of great partners is just the beginning of what's to come. For all of us at Gearbox, this year is all about Borderlands. Our game development team crafts every aspect of the game with love and attention, from the distinctive hand-inked art to the stories of our characters. We are very excited to have found partners who are dedicated to creating products with just as much passion, creativity, and attention to detail. Then they also released a full list of their partners to help create and distribute these products, so if you are hoping or waiting for Borderlands 3 anything, know that it will be coming and this is the largest assortment we've ever seen. And probably keep an eye out on the partners too and I'll try to keep you guys updated on whenever some of these bigger products launch. And that's where I'm going to end this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like and share, subscribe for all things Borderlands, and I will see you guys in the next one.